coming up on this Monday morning edition of DITV, it's homecoming week. From blood drives to Iowa shout to the big game and more, we'll tell you all about the fun events coming up this week. And later, as election day nears, more key political fig figures are visiting the state. We'll tell you about the latest coming up. Field hockey knocked off a top 10 team and tight end you struck again in Bloomington. I'll tell you more in sports. Your bad luck is over, so your sunny forecast is coming up. And more coming on up on this Monday morning edition of Daily Iowa TV. Don't click away. DITV starts right now. for tuning in to this live Monday edition of DITV. I'm Cindy Zatz alongside Lauren Burrell. Yes, good morning and happy homecoming week. It seems like everyone is like beaming with school spirit. Well, it's always a great day to be a Hawkeye, Lauren. With homecoming week upon us, there are many events to look forward to. And to give us a preview of these fun events is DITV reporter John Chung with Standing by in the Newsroom. Good morning, John. Good morning, Sydney and Lauren. Kicking off the homecoming festivities is the Bridging Our World dedication ceremony over at the IMU. The event is a flag display at the IMU footbridge representing the countries of UI international students. Today you can also attend the blood drive anytime from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. at the ballroom on the second floor of the IMU. Tomorrow night the CRWC is holding an event called Ruckus. Teams will compete at the CRWC in dodgeball and obstacle course and tug of war. On Wednesday, Fresh Check Day will be located at Hubbard Park, an event that connects UI students with specialists from campus mental health and wellness, suicide prevention, and others. Food, music, prizes, and giveaways will also be there from 10 to 4. Starting at 6 p.m. Thursday night is Iowa Shout, previously reserved for fraternities and sororities, but is now open to the whole University of Iowa student body. Iowa Shout consists of student performances in dance, acting, and many other categories. Following the Iowa Shout is the coronation of the homecoming royalty, and the night caps off with the cab improv show at the IMU. The homecoming parade takes place on Friday starting at 5.45 p.m. and will travel throughout downtown Iowa City. After the parade, Scope Productions is hosting a concert on the Pentecrest featuring opener Squirrel Flower and main event artist Julie Byron. Finally, to end the week is the homecoming football game against Maryland on Saturday with kickoff starting at 11 a.m. Sounds like it's going to be a fun-packed week. To be sure to stick with DITV for more homecoming updates and events. And you can also visit the homecoming.uiowa.edu. Thanks, guys. So, homecoming week is coming up. I certainly hope the weather holds up all week. Let's toss it over with Jacob with more on the weather for the week. Well, you guys are in luck. Well, everyone, we have finally done it. We got through that miserable time of the year. Scientists call the first and second week of October. The rainy days seem to be behind us and the sun is here to stay. Sadly, though, it brought the cold with it. And it all starts today with your Monday forecast looking clear as a pool of fresh, clean drinking water. Today has a high of 48 degrees with sunny skies throughout the day. As we lean into your night hours, we will see a, for a freezing low of 32 degrees with clear skies throughout the night. Now moving on to your extended forecast, Tuesday has a high of 58 degrees and a low of 35 with sunny skies. Wednesday keeps the trend going with sunny skies and a high of 52 degrees and a low of 32. Thursday, as Rob Stone would say, is a ham bone with your fourth consecutive sunny day with a temperature in the upper 50s for a high and a low in the lower 40s. Friday, although it is the most favored day of the week, will break the trend like you and your diet last week with mostly cloudy skies and a high of 60 and a low in the upper 30s. All right, guys, you wanted some sun and now you got a lot of it. Now get out there and enjoy it because as most of you know, Winter is coming. That's all I have for you in the weather studio. Back to you at the desk. White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders was in Des Moines over the weekend. Sanders was featured speaker for the Second Harvest Festival, a major fundraiser for the Republican incumbent Governor Kim Reynolds at the Iowa State Fairgrounds. Sanders gave praise to, to Senators Chuck Grasley, who oversaw the Senate Judiciary Committee, consideration for Brett Kavanaugh. Sanders said, quote, Elections have consequences, and in, in nowhere is we are more apparent than the confirmation of Bre Brett Kavanaugh. The way Democrats acted was disgraceful, and it showed that we absolutely should keep 
Republicans in the state and in Congress, end quote. The full story can be read on dailyiowan.com. In 2017, a state law which changed the collective bargaining rights for public employees is now affecting several University of Iowa bargaining units, which includes a campaign to organize graduate students. These units are now facing elections to be recertified in order to be recertified units. They must receive a 50% plus one vote. Every eligible, eligible excuse me, voter who does not vote is considered a no vote. The voting starts today and goes through October 29th. Stay tuned with DITV for updates on the results. Johnson County Board of Supervisors released their annual State of the County report last Thursday. During the meeting, the reporter largely focused on the goals of the board from the past year. Johnson County Supervisor Mike Carby outlined their four property goals, which included the, the pain to organize graduate students. These units are now facing elections to be recertified. In order to refield units may receive a 50% plus one vote. Every election vote who does not vote is considered a no vote, and the voting starts today and goes through October 29th. Stay tuned for DITV for updates on the results. Today is National Pregnancy and Fit Loss Remembrance Day. Um, excuse us, we are having technical difficulties. Today is National Pregnancy and Infant Loss Remembrance Day, and to honor those who have lost loved ones, Hertz Donuts will be selling donuts made to look like blue and pink baby footprints. You can purchase these donuts all day, and 100% of the proceeds will go to the local organization, No Foot Too Small. This organization draws awareness to pregnancy loss and infant mortality. The organization is partnering with hospitals around the country looking to build birthing and other suites for families in these situations. The first set of suites will be built right here at the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics. If you'd like to learn more about what this organization does and how you can help, visit nofoottoosmall.org. And Lauren, we sh sure have had a big weekend with a big Hawkeye win in football, but we can't forget about all the other sports. I know. I'm personally excited for some of the different sports besides Hawkeye football. Let's go ahead and toss it over to John in the sports studio with more. Yeah, you guys got that right. This week, Iowa field hockey played two top 10 conference opponents. They defeated number six Penn State on Friday, but lost in a close match against number two Maryland on Sunday. Against the Nittany Lions, it was tied up for most of the game with the score at two goals apiece. However, with just one minute left, Maddie Murphy scored in dramatic fashion, giving Iowa a 3-2 victory. But yesterday against Maryland, unfortunately, they could not keep that winning streak alive as they fell 2-1 to one to the number two ranked team in the nation. We need to stay connected, on the, especially on transition. Um, organization on defense needs to improve, and that's probably what we're going to work on for this next week. I will wrap up their regular season this Friday when they play number 14 Rutgers on the road. Iowa soccer earned their third straight victory this weekend and is undefeated at home this season. The Hawkeyes hosted Michigan Sunday afternoon in a game that got off to a slow start with a scoreless first half. In the second half, junior Devin Burns sprints down the field and chips it in with an assist from Natalie Winters that goes over the Michigan goalie and gave the team a 1-0 victory over the Wolverines. With this win, goalkeeper Claire Graves moved into the third spot for all-time victories in program history. We thought we could catch them on the counter. Um, you know, and, and that's actually ironically how the goal happened is that you know we were able to catch him flat and Devin got in behind and was composed enough to finish. Mostly, I mean, we were doing everything right the first half. Um, we're talking about some, like some strategies, maybe like playing a little more over top, or um, and that was the goal too. So um, I mean, just kind of like keep going. We knew they were going to come out hard also, and um, kind of keep the game under our control. The winning is a habit is something that we've been saying. So hopefully, just continuing the winning streak and uh, coming out with the same mentality we have the past three games. Tune back into DITV later this week for a special look at Claire Graves' record-breaking season. In other news, the football team also took care of business when they traveled to Bloomington to take on the Hoosiers. Well, okay, took care of business is an understatement. Iowa dominated this game. It all started on the opening drive with this touchdown pass to TJ Hawkinson. But TJ wasn't the only tight end to see the end zone as Noah Fant put up a touchdown of his own with this 28-yard connection from Nate Stanley. 
Stanley threw a whopping six touchdown passes in this one, including this upcoming immaculate pass to Nick Easley. Iowa had no trouble with this one as they beat the Hoosiers 42 to 16. You know, we knew Indiana would pose challenges for us. Uh, they're aggressive on defense, and then uh, the quarterback and their offensive attack. Uh, it's the first time we've really, I think, played a good dual threat guy that could uh, hurt you with his feet or his arm. And uh, he, he's a really tough player to go against. And, you know, I think we all saw that last week as well. So um, happy about the way we responded and came up with some big plays. We knew coming into it, they were explosive offense, um, averaging just over 28 points a game, I think. A quarterback that's a dual threat guy. And, uh, you know, we knew we were going to be tested. I thought we responded well, held them to 16 points. But at the same time, we can play even better. we got some stuff to clean up, things to learn from. Just got to keep moving on from here. Just clicking like that is just a hard thing to stop because, you know, we're going to run the ball too. So when we get when we get the passing game going, we start getting the running game going, it's pick your poison. Are we going to blitz them to stop the run or are we going to have to man up and cover them, you know, to going deep, going short, you know, and, you know. It's just a two-way two thing with us. You're going to pick, you're going to have to pick your poison like I always say. After this win, Iowa found its way into the rankings at the AP poll at number 19 and the coaches at number 22. But as I'm sure you noticed in those highlights, we heard the names TJ Hawkinson and Noah Fant. DITV Sports Director Lucy Rodine has more on how those players continue the legacy of exceptional tight ends at Iowa. Iowa football has always had the reputation as tight end you. And with Noah Fant and TJ Hawkinson dominating on the field this season, that reputation still stands. There's guys in the history that, you know, that played here, There's some tight ends that have gone through the University of Iowa that, uh, I mean, just to have your name even announced with theirs is, is, is an honor. TJ and Noah earned that honor not only with their explosiveness on the field, but with their ability to help make plays for their teammates. They make plays in the run game, too. They, they spring runs for us. Uh, they make big blocks. And just, I know, I couldn't imagine being on defense, you know, trying to handle two tight ends like that. They made game plan for, you know, um, Noah and TJ, but, you know, you got me, Brandon, Easy, like I said, on the outside. And then the team started to game plan for us because we become, you know, a threat, so, so to say. Then, you know, Noah and TJ can, you know, have a field day like they did today. And the two-headed monster at tight end struck again as TJ Hawkinson and Noah Fant both had over 100 yards against the Hoosiers. Uh, obviously, they're both great players and they complement each other and they complement our uh, whole offense just going forward and just um, they make big plays, they make good blocks, so I think they just bring a lot of energy and excitement to our team. And that excitement shows as TJ and Noah both rank in the top 15 nationally in receiving yards by tight ends. Reporting from Memorial Stadium in Bloomington, Indiana, this has been Lucy Rodine for DI TV Sports. Iowa's use of their tight ends is more impressive than the sheer number of pumpkin flavored food products released this month. All jokes aside, expect this two tight end trend to continue. That's it for me in the sports studio, but come back tomorrow to hear more about Nate Stanley's record-breaking weekend. Cindy and Lauren, back to you. Well, before we go, the royal family just celebrated the wedding of Princess Eugene over the weekend, but now there is another reason to celebrate. That's right, Lauren. Announced just this morning, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are expecting their first child. And if you know me, you know I'm a huge royalist, so I am very, very excited. And I'm putting money down. I think it will be a boy. Well, I'm going to contradict that and say a girl. <laughs> well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. The baby is due in spring, and the couple is starting a royal tour of Australia just today. And that'll do it for this Monday edition of DITV. Be sure to head over to dailyiowan.com for all your latest news and sports and weather every day, Monday through Friday. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Daily Iowan, and, of course, at dailyiowan.com. For DITV, I'm Sunny Zatz. And I'm Lauren Varell. Have a great day, Iowa City, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow.